passengers abducted as bandits intercept Katsuna Transport Authority vehicle. 16 state governors endorse the establishment of state police. Restaurant operators in Gombe decry low patronage due to Ramadan fast. And on the international scene, Ghana president caught in squabble over anti-LGBTQ bill. Hello and welcome to Trust News R. I am Sumaya Abubakar. And now the details. We start with security. An unidentified number of passengers are said to have been kidnapped following an attack by some resident or bandit in Kankara local government area of Katsina State. The incident occurred on Thursday after the hoodlums intercepted an 18-seater bus with a registration number 14B300KT belonging to the Katsina State Transport Authority. An eyewitness said most of the passengers on board were traveling from Funtua to Katsina local government area. Although authorities are yet to comment on the incident, the eyewitness said the incident occurred precisely between the Burugudau Burdugo and Yarogoji community before reaching Kankara local government um, town rather and also Kankara is one of the front line local government areas in Katsina South where not only residents but commuters live in fear of bandits attack and now our reporter in the state that's Abdullahi Yamadi is joining us via phone call to give us an update on the situation good evening and thank you for joining us Abdullahi Yamadi Hello, good evening. Thank you for being there for us. Mm, indeed. So, Katsina has been, you know, the front, uh, on, on the front board of every insecurity issue happening. So, what, just give us an update on, uh, you know, the situation surrounding this particular incident. Well, uh, Burdugo and uh, Erguji are neighboring communities. And uh, all of these communities uh, on Malabar, Kankara, Katsina Road. Uh, the proximity between Erboji and Brudegal is less than two kilometers. And uh, of course, even recently when I visited uh, a resident of this area, uh, told me that uh, the particular spot where this incident occurred uh, is a very notorious place. Uh, in fact, many people uh, have deserted that area because uh, of its uh, frequency of attacks that are uh, uh, occurring in, at that particular spot. So, uh, according to eyewitnesses from both uh, Ergoji and Burdugo, uh, the incidents occurred around 1.30 p.m. today, and uh, uh, eight passengers were abducted uh, from the initial stage. Uh, four were rescued by police authorities from Kankara Division. Uh, when they trained the uh, kidnappers, uh, they were able to rescue four passengers on hot. Uh, from the four passengers rescued, three are female, one is male. And uh, of course, uh, the police, uh, according to the uh, spokesman, uh, the command here in Katana, uh, is reassuring that uh, uh, the police are on the trail of the bandits and uh, they will not uh, uh, surrender until when the uh, remaining four passengers are rescued and hurt. And uh, another thing uh, people need to know is that, uh, uh, that, there, are, that there is a particular uh, IDP camp at uh, Burdigo, uh which most of the IDPs there uh, have been expressing fear that uh, since their arrival at that camp, they have never seen any security personnel around them. And uh, knowing full that uh, that particular area is uh, an infested uh, area by bandits. Uh, like I said, even recently when I visited, uh, most of the residents are uh, expressing fear that uh, uh, at any given time, uh, bandits can strike that particular spot. 
you know, speaking and, uh, about, speaking about the fear of the too. people, um, uh, Abdullahi, you know, you made mention that these people are, are really scared about uh, what is going to happen. What are they saying about the growing number of attacks across Katsina, even with, you know, the security watch corps that was, um, you know, built up, organized by the government? What are the people saying? Well, uh, people are seriously disturbed about the escalating insecurity in Kazuma State. And uh, what they are saying is, uh, uh, what is responsible for, uh, responsible for all of these uh, attacks uh, is largely uh, due to uh, lack of proactiveness from the side of the security operatives. Uh, most of the times, uh, they are being more reactive than being proactive. Uh, they will only uh, show seriousness when there is an attack, and uh, when there is none, uh, people will be exposed to a lot of uh, 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 problems and, of course, uh, a lot of uh, fear because uh, the bandits are always around and of course they can attack any time and uh, any moment they can strike uh, that is the fear uh, people are expressing here in Katsina yeah. and uh, another thing you need to know is that uh, this particular spot uh, like I said is a notorious spot because uh, a resident was telling me that uh, hardly a week passes without seeing uh, some bandits uh, passing through that area with some uh, rustled animals. The securities are aware, and of course, most of the residents of those areas, those communities, are aware of what is happening there. That is so really it is sad very and serious scary. Issue. You know, knowing that that is happening and then nothing can really be done about it. So the governor, um, Omar Rada, recently came out to say there is no room for negotiation, you know, between the bandits and uh, the government and also paying off ransom. But then there is an incessant, you know, kidnapping happening. So what is the take of the government now and how are the people, you know, accepting uh, this declaration by the state government? Well, uh Really, uh, the government has taken position saying that uh, they have zero tolerance to uh, negotiations with the bandits and, of course, uh, payment of ransom. Uh, you can testify to that even that uh, even recently when uh, victims of uh, Gamji community in several local governments uh, were abducted uh, at a wedding ceremony, uh, the governor uh, apparently said, uh, they have zero tolerance to uh, these negotiations and, of course, payment of ransom. Even the residents uh, requested the state government to at least assist them in the payment of ransom. And we have seen how they contributed their monies to pay to F. Miller Nera uh, to secure the release of their 10 uh, members of their families. So people are saying that uh, even if the government is not uh, ready to negotiate with this bandit, at least we should see other security operatives uh, yes. taking one steps in, uh, in securing least, the people. Let's uh, do it, like securing this state. It's really yes, a sad of course, situation, securing the of state. course. Mm. But then, yeah. of course, um, so, would, so, would subsequently, you know, call you just to give more, you know, light on the situation at, as it unravels. Thank you so much, Abdullahi, for joining us and giving us the update. Uh, thank you for being there for us. Thank, uh, thank you for having us. Of course. Thank you. Meanwhile, displaced residents of Borudugau, Ergoje, and neighboring communities of Kankara local government area of Katsina State, who are displaced by ravaging bandits, are calling for help to enable them go back to their villages. Thousands of the displaced residents are now taking refuge in Borudugau Senior Secondary School, while hundreds of others, including women and children, are squatting with their relatives in towns perceived to be safe. Abdullahi Yamadi visited the area and bring back this report. Take a look. These women and children convey the tales of horror, saying living here without any security presence is horrific. They also said their loved ones have been killed, their houses burnt to ashes, and they arrived here with little or nothing to take care of themselves and only depending on support from friends and sympathizers to survive. 
These IDPs who said they are lucky to have counted themselves among the survivors are frequently making references with their loved ones in the hands of bandits. We did not carry anything to the place because we woke up in the night and saw ourselves running to unknown destinations. We arrived here with nothing else to call our own. The bandits have killed our husbands, children, the elderly, burnt our houses and adopted men. Right now, we are tired of being here. We honestly want to go home to start a new life. As you know, this is a fasting period. At least, we're supposed to be at home by now. As such, we're appealing to the government to give us security. The suffering here is too much. We don't have comfort here. No food. We don't have anything. These people have so far spent over four weeks in these dirty classrooms, careless about hygiene. Elsewhere at Ergoji, the weekly local market is witnessing partial or low patronage, largely due to the escalating insecurity in the area. Our people are being killed daily. We don't have any peace of mind to concentrate on our farms or trades. To make our lives better, I think for close to two years, I did not work on my farm now for fear of attack or abduction. That was why we protested recently, and it has not yielded any positive results. Insecurity challenges had triggered humanitarian and socio-economic crises here forcing residents to abandon their farms and other means of livelihood. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Katsina. Away from Katsina, an unidentified number of people are feared killed in Ubobi community of Apa, local government area of Benue State, following a coordinated attack on the community by suspected headsmen. The attack, it was guided, started on Wednesday and did not stop till the early hours of Thursday. The community leader, Eric Amodu, said there has been a threat of attack on the community for over a week before the violent attack started on Wednesday night. When contacted on the renewed killings in the local government area, the police spokesperson, Sewesi Anini, said the commissioner of police in the state, Emmanuel Adeshina, visited APA last week to ensure adequate troops deployment but admitted that her office was yet to get information on the latest attack. Benue rural communities have become unsafe for farmers and villagers alike in the last couple of years due to persistent headsmen attacks. Earlier, I spoke to our reporter in the state, Jimmy Adzandi, on the incident. Take a listen. Well, it's for the security agencies to tell us exactly what is the circumstances. But from the uh, information we have now, it is not unconnected with the farmer header crisis that has been known for a very long time, like you said, in Benue State and some other parts of the country. Uh, let me uh, call our attention to the fact that uh, a part local government, we are in the Obobi, where this thing happened yesterday, you know, is an APA local government. And APA local government shares the same federal constituency with the AGATU. That's to tell you the proximity that they have. And uh, let me recall, I mean, re re refresh our minds that only early this month, there was a very serious attack of this magnitude in uh, AGATU local government. And back uh, in uh, February, precisely, I think February 18th, uh, you know, uh, this year, there, there was an attack, a massive attack in uh, APA local government where so many people were killed, and of course the youth of the area decided to block the highway. It took the intervention of the, you know, uh, prominent sons of the area, including the minority leader of the Senate, uh, Senator Abamoro, to actually calm their nerves. So what happened yesterday, you know, was more of a, a shocker to every person living in that community. And Ben is still in Benara, because only yesterday, Wednesday, the governor of the state had a serious security meeting with the traditional rulers in the state. So this attack has actually, you know, sent a lot of shock to the people within and around. And uh, the situation as it stands now is quite very, you know, uh, difficult for us to draw the line because 
In fact, I, I just I just got off uh, trying to reach the PP police TV. I always stand a better chance to begin to you know identify or casualty. Mm. But it stands the place is actually scattered, and people are not even sure of where their loved ones are at the moment. That's really scary and a sad situation, Jimmy. I mean, speaking on the police officers now, this you know uh, is signposting a continuous uh, you know attack, like a series attack happening in the state. So what are the, you know, police uh, and, and the security agencies, you know, saying about all of this? Is there any sign of maybe plans to tackle, you know, this uh, situation and or even reoccurrence uh, cases? Yeah, yeah, when you say the police, I remember, you know, the police is actually supposed to be in charge of editing internal security. And recently in Benue State, we, you know, we were introduced, the first committee was introduced to a new commissioner of policy, Manuel Adeshina, who actually held a press conference and told us that the, the, there's, there's a plan in place to make sure that the attacks are stopped in Benue State. In fact, he, he emphatically said the issue of the farmer header crisis will be addressed once and for all. Mm. And the right one, you know, waiting to to see the results of that that kind of pronouncement for someone who just took office, then is greeted by this attack uh, that happened almost on a weekly basis. Now it was just two weeks ago we reported the attacks in Kwande and uh, of course in the Kum local government, and this one yesterday. So it's Benue State has 23 local governments. It's like the way it's happening. No local government is spared at the moment, and so the police will always tell you. You know, there is a plan in place. That plan is what the people, the Benue people, are, the residents, especially those in the rural areas, are wondering. Remember that, you know, uh, this is the time that people are preparing their farms, you know, mm. are preparing to go to the farms as soon as the, the rainy rain season set in. And that situation is not so because a lot of us, you know, we can't look like a, there was even a call for, you know, for communities to begin to think within their own respective domains, you know, for their own internal security. You, you know, but speaking, speaking of that, yet. Jimmy, I wanted to get there because there's been a lot of push, you know, for uh, policing from communities themselves. So what are, you know, the people from these communities uh, that have been suffering this uh, consecutive continuous attack? What has been their plan? Is there any, you know, uh, push or direction or suggestion towards making sure they're able to at least, you know, protect themselves? Yes, I think it's going to be it has to be a holistic thing because what is happening here is more or less like what find in security like a guerrilla warfare, a situation where you don't know where the attack is coming from sometimes, mm. but then people are heated. Why you know that okay it's happening in this particular community? The next time you see it happen in another community, I just told you that you know in February there was an attack in this same local government where some people are still in camps in IDP camps. So the communities are not even coordinated. They are not even, you know, a situation where you can't even say, okay, uh, young people should come together and let's begin to form this kind of... In reality, the, the, the atmosphere is that of fear. Mm. And so the people are still relying on the security agencies to do the need for because they say, you know, because most we don't have the... They, they don't have the, you know, the, the authority to carry arms. That was Jimmy Adzande from Benue State. Moving on, worried about the security challenges facing the country, 16 states' governors have endorsed the establishment of state police. The National Economic Council, the NEC, disclosed this on Thursday in a report submitted to the council at its 140th meeting held virtually and chaired by Vice President Kashim Shatima. The Minister of Budget and Economic Planning, Atiku Abagudu, who briefed state house correspondents virtually after the meeting said out, of the 36 states, about 20 state governors and FCT were yet to make their submissions. However, he did not mention the state. The governors who submitted their memos also called for the review of the Nigerian constitution. Kaduna State Governor Obasani has called upon traditional rulers in the state to take a more active role in addressing the security challenges by promptly providing information to security agencies. The governor made this plea during a meeting with stakeholders from seven local government areas primarily affected by insecurity. Bella Musa has more. Over the last six months, the Kaduna State Government has been organizing security meetings involving stakeholders from local government areas severely affected by insecurity. 
the recent meeting, which included traditional leaders, elected members of the state assembly and chairmen from the seven affected local government areas, Chukun, Birnungwari, Kajuru, Giwa, Igabi, Kachia, and Kagarko, emphasized the need to improve intelligence sharing and gathering efforts. Unfortunately, we had some setbacks in the last few weeks. And that's the reason why we are gathering here today again to look at other areas that we need to deepen our own engagements. Governor Obasani acknowledged the vital role of traditional leaders in preserving peace and security, stressing the importance of increased dedication to effectively tackle the prevailing security challenges. We are here. We believe security is local. And that's the reason why we believe financial rulers have a very important role to play, particularly in ensuring that uh, they monitor the community and also observe the movements of people that are strangers within the community. After the closed door meeting, Kaduna State Police Commissioner Audi Ali informed journalists that 200 special intervention personnel are ready for deployment to Kuriga. A special intervention squad. Uh, I just inspected 200 of them this morning. Uh, they are on ground. We are making uh, every effort, logistics support. The state government has promised, and uh, very soon they will move out. And uh, when the IU was here, he promised a unit of mobile to be, uh, to be deployed to Kurega, you remember? Yes, sir. And uh, the unit was there. It has been deployed, and they are on ground. And uh, we are happy that uh, we received information that the people of Kuriga received them and they are very appreciative of that uh, gacha. The State Commissioner of Police also revealed that police and military units have been dispatched to Kajuru local government area following a recent attack that led to the abduction of 87 individuals. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. A week after the tragic murder of military personnel in Delta State, Governor Sharif Oborivoi has warned traditional rulers in the state against protecting suspects in the incident. 17 military personnel, a lieutenant colonel, two majors, one captain, and 13 soldiers were killed while on a peacekeeping mission in Okwama community, Ugeli, South local government area of the state last Thursday in a major blow to the country's military. As authorities in the country intensify work on the matter, Governor Borivoi wants traditional rulers to cooperate in the investigations. While addressing traditional rulers on the unfortunate incident at the state traditional rulers council sectariat in Asaba, Governor Oboivewe said Delta was governed within the tenets of the rule of law and human decency, stressing that no kingdom should shield the perpetrators of this dastardly act. The governor said President Tinubu and the military authorities have assured him that innocent citizens in the state will not be victimized. Meanwhile, the Delta State House of Assembly is appealing to the Nigerian Army not to retaliate over the killings of its officers in Okwama community. This follows a motion moved on the floor of the House by one of the members representing Okoloba. Jonathan Awaii reports. Delta State House of Assembly held a mini silence in honor of the deceased soldiers. The House also directed the governor to set up a commission of inquiry to investigate the remote cause of the problem and bring the perpetrators to book. To readily condemn the provoked killing of 16 officers, men of the Nigerian Army, which include the lieutenant colonel, commander officer, two major captains, captain, the member representing Okoloba at the house described the action as national disaster. Notice that the presence of the military in the area has crippled the economic activities. The whole thing is about lands. The Okuma community is located right inside the Mali local area. In one flank, 
you have Akubone community. In the other flag, you have Okoloma community, both in Bamadi local government area. And Okoloma community, which is in Ogeli South, is in between these two communities in Bamadi local government area. So it's all about land. I'm told some people are accusing the state government for not doing enough, but that is not true. We need efforts to ensure that there is peace. Office of the Special Advisor on Peace Building and Conflict Resolution, uh, Chief Uzo, Robin, Robin Uzo, invited these communities and representatives of all other security agencies were there. And there was a communique and a peace undertaking was signed by both communities. Uh, they appeal to the government at all levels to resolve the issue and bring back peace to both communities. Jonathan Awanya, Trust TV News, Asaba. Youth of Yenizwe, a P of Okaka community of Yenogwa local government area of Bayelsa State on Thursday, staged a peaceful protest in the Yenogwa metropolis demanding justice for Moses Akanda, who was allegedly shot dead by operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, the NDLEA. The protest, which commenced from Yenizwe APA community, saw the protesters march to the government house Yenogwa carrying placards with different inscriptions like enough of the killing of APA at Sisa youths by security agencies in Bielsa State. Trust TV Friday, a B-Mobile with Peter, completes the report. The Ogwan Youth President in Natimi Timothy and the Yenizuwe Peer Community Youth President Samuel Okoko Martin said the protest was to demand justice for a youth of Yenizuwe Peer Community, Moses Akanda, who was allegedly murdered by operative of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, on Wednesday. NDLEA, we came to one of my communities, Yenizuwe Peer Community, precisely. That there is a drug baron, that they have arrested the person, and they started shooting prolifically to the air, and shooting better. How would they be shooting to the air? And they now shot somebody. But unfortunately, for this innocent Moses Akanda, he's a very peaceful young boy that they have bullet and killed. It's a direct shot on the shot on the chest. We want the government to ask the commander to produce the person within three days. As a Jogwa president, I'm going to mobilize all the use of APA Atessa and we are going to occupy the street of APA Atessa. They shot one of our innocent youth to death. And so we are here today demanding justice. Whoever is involved in that in your crime should be brought to book because the security agencies they are supposed to be the one to protect us, but as it stands, they are the one killing us on a daily basis. So we are here demanding justice for the killing of one Mr. Moses Akanda. Addressing the protesters. The Bayelsa State Commissioner of Police, C.P. Frank Idu, sympathized with the community over the loss of their member and assured the protesters of justice. I'm sorry for your loss. Deeply. Really. It's avoidable. So, can you guarantee that you wait? Tomorrow, three persons will uh, uh, brought in. You can choose any young, young boy like this boy. Can be the fourth person, then the woman that will not make too much of noise. So we can transform this conflict and come to curious or compromise. What you want us to do? Justice for your brother. And what the governor wants right now is tranquility so he can be able to resolve all this uh, um how do I put it now? Vortex. Huh? Vortex of crisis. The commissioner assured that the command will continue to work with all stakeholders in order to ensure security of lives and properties in the state. From Yenagua, Friday, Ebimobo with Peter. Trust TV News, Yenagua. You're watching news are on Trust TV. Coming up. Restaurant operators in Gombe decry low patronage due to Ramadan fast.
This and more shortly after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. If you are just joining us, this is News Hour on Trust TV. Here is a recap of our top stories. Reportry passengers abducted as bandit intercepts cuts in a transport authority vehicle. And 16 state governors endorse the establishment of state police. Moving on to more stories, and our Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Benjamin Kalu, says the problem of Nigeria is not only in the hands of politicians, but civil servants, as well as technocrats, whom he said continue heavily to the problems. Now, Kalu stated this on Thursday during a courtesy call by the platform Public Service Boot Camp attendees at the National Assembly Abuja. The lawmaker said there was need to bring digitization into the public service space where an auditing app can encourage accountability and productivity. Kalu, who acknowledged the youth as the energy of a nation, observed that many young people do not understand the concept of public service, which has always been misinterpreted as a mere means of livelihood. Now, the problem of Nigeria is not just only in the hands of politicians. The civil servants, the technocrats, contribute heavily to the problem of Nigeria. When ordinarily they're supposed to be solution providers. Sometimes they ridicule the politicians by hiding the fundamentals that will help the politicians achieve their mandate and the program they have set out for the nation. They frustrate the politicians. It ought not to be so. The House of Representatives has approved an extension period for the capital component of the 2024 appropriation in line with President Tinubu's request. The lower chamber also restated its commitment to ensuring correctional centers across the country meet the basic international standard. There were parts of uh, the resolutions of the House before it adjourned for the Easter and Salah breaks. The report. President Bola Tinubu has written to the House of Representatives seeking approval and extension of the period for the implementation of the capital component of the 2023 appropriation bill from March 31, 2024 to June 30, 2024. The House Speaker, Tajuddin Abbas, who read the President's letter at the commencement of the day's plenary, said the President also asked the House to extend the implementation of the Supplementary Appropriation Act from March 31, 2024 to June 30, 2024. He said the extension became necessary to ensure that the provisions of the two acts were fully implemented. The Nigerian army has blamed congestion, absence of CCTV cameras and other essential facilities as largely responsible for the Kujie jailbreak of July 5th, 2022. The army stated these at a probe instituted by the House of Representatives Joint Committees on Reformatory Institutions, Justice, Police Affairs, Interior and Human Rights in Abuja on Wednesday. The committee is investigating the whereabouts of inmates who escaped from Kujie Correction Center and the issues of congestion experienced in mostly all the correctional services across the country. The Assistant Director, Commercial Law, Directorate of Legal Service of the Nigerian Army, Major Peter Egbunya, who made the assertion, said the Army is still investigating officers who were on duty during the day of the incident. He, however, said the incident took place during rotation of troops, adding that the Nigerian army was not the only force on ground on that fateful day. We also observed issues of uh, low fencing and the CCTV camera absence within the general area. Uh, these are some of the things that uh, we observe and uh, we are unable to, these things we are unable to be put in place before the incident, and uh, I want to believe that these things would have assisted the guards to know what is happening, uh, possibly to see how these things can be uh, on how to improve the conditions of the 260 correctional centers across the country and forestall future attacks, stakeholders took time to suggest ways that would aid the joint committees in their final recommendation to the House. 
Federal Ministry of Justice greatly supported the efforts to decentralize the correctional service to allow states establish and manage their own correctional centers. This was achieved through the alteration of the Constitution that moved the correctional service prisons from exclusive list to concurrent list. This is expected to fast track the congestion of the correctional centers nationwide when properly implemented. We have just last year over 14,000 that have been processed through non custodial measures. But without funding, it can't help us. My final comment is this. There are three major categories of people who we find in custody. And it's important that we remember it each time we think about these issues. One, those who are innocent, they have no business being there. We must do everything to make them go out. Secondly, the minor offenders. Those minor offenders, we need to find very practical ways, including non-custodial, to deal with them. Thirdly, those who are hiding criminals. And each of these categories, even if it's one day or one hour you spend in custody, you will have problem because of socialization into criminal life. And we know it is not only correctional service that have detention facilities. The chairman of the Joint Committee, Chinedu Oga, who emphasized the importance of correctional services to Nigeria's security, stated that the committee will do everything to ensure that it meets global best standards. There is no any sign to show that the military men are on duty from our own constitutional mandate on our oversight when we get to that place. Because we saw where the military people stationed their vehicle, where the police station, their vehicle, and civil defense. And there is no any act of ascending of bullets or anything. They just went straight and break the Kujia prison, and those inmates escaped. We know what the military can do. Institutions invited with the Nigeria police the Nigerian Army, Ministry of Justice, Interior Ministry, and Human Rights Commission, amongst others. The breaking news of unspecified number of people have been reportedly killed on Thursday when bandits in their numbers invaded a market in Madaka community, Rafi local government area of Niger State. According to residents, the attackers invaded the market around 3 p.m. when the market was at its peak, shooting sporadically at people. One of the residents who spoke in confidence said the number of casualties had not been ascertained until situation comes. They said the attack came two days after bandits also attacked Pangu Gari, killing the district head and four other people. The Niger State Commissioner of Homeland Security, Brigadier General Bello Abdullahi Muhammad, retired, confirmed the attack. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission has urged media organizations to combat fake news targeted against the commission as the off-cycle elections in Edo and Ondo state draw closer. No Samson has more. The chairman of the commission, during the first consultative meeting with media organizations, briefed media houses about the commission's preparations towards the off-cycle elections in Edo and Ondo states. He also charged them to combat fake news. A very important reality in today's age of information technology is the spread of fake news and misinformation instantly and on a global scale. I urge you to be a bulwark against fake and misleading news and fake news and misleading narratives about the commission and its activities. Responding on behalf of the media organizations, the president of NUJ, Chris Isiguzo, assured the INEC chairman of the media's continued collaboration with the commission in providing the election that the country deserves. He urged all media houses to continue their fight for good, fair, and credible elections. Having become more like a family in this gathering, we must carry forward the spirit of collaboration and dedication to democratic principles. We must continue to work hand in hand, united in our pursuits of a more just, inclusive, and democratic society. This is the second off cycle elections since the February and March 2023 general elections. Polls will open in Edo and Odo State on the 21st September and November 16th later this year. No, Samson. Trust TV News, Abuja. 
The federal government says it will collaborate with the Jigawa state government to spearhead the inclusion of Almajiri's pupils in the homegrown school feeding program. The collaboration is also targeted at reducing the menace of out-of-school children roaming the streets in the state and the region as a whole. The senior special assistant to the president of homegrown school feeding program, Yetunde Adenechi, disclosed this during a meeting at the government house in Duse. The report. Adenechi emphasized the importance of collaboration with the Jigawa state government to enhance the program's effectiveness and ensure that every Nigerian child, including Almajiris, have access to proper nutrition and education. She also mentioned ongoing dialogue with national and international organizations to help improve and sustain the homegrown feeding program for the betterment of Nigeria's future leaders. We are here as regards the school feeding program. And you are well aware, sir, that uh, there have been some changes that have been going on through the system in the federal. Uh, these uh, resolves have just been to ensure transparency, accountability, and the smoothness of the program. Mr. President is passionate about the homegrown, uh, homegrown school feeding program, and he's passionate about Nigerian children. He wants each and every Nigerian child to be, you know, given a meal, a nutritious meal a day, at least one nutritious meal a day. Governor Umar Ramadi expressed gratitude for the support and the recommencement of the program after scrutiny, highlighting its significance in addressing the challenge of out-of-school children, which poses a potential security threat in northern Nigeria. The school feeding program is very dear to us in Jigao State. It's a very good initiative, and I want to thank Mr. President, one, for accepting to continue the program. Two, two, for his own initiative to look at the program, scrutinize it, and make it beneficial to the people. This is a very, very important issue. Because every policy you have seen of government, there is need to check it, scrutinize it, and ensure that people derive the benefit for that policy. So I think what Mr. President is doing by suspending the program and then looking at it, and I think it's a very good uh, intention and I think it's something that is welcome. The governor reiterated Jigawa state government's commitment to supporting the program and tackling the issue of out of school children to ensure a brighter future for all. During the holy month of Ramadan, restaurant operations usually experience a lull in business due to the Muslim fast. While most of the restaurants close for the whole month, others have adopted, adopted about some strategies to curb the slowdown. However, some businesses like Ice Blocks are taking advantage of the season to make a brisk business as patronage surge. Hassan Kohli reports. Majority of restaurants in Gombe are usually closed during the holy month of Ramadan as patronage drastically reduces due to the past. While some are closed, Others are still run skeletal services during the period. Cynthia Alex is one of the restaurant operators that is still in service. She shares her experience during the Ramadan period. Patronage is very low now because of the fasting. It is hard for us to get half of what we used to get on a daily basis before the fast. So we reduce the quantity of food cooked. As a matter of fact, we only open four days in a week. While food businesses are slowing down, the ice block vendors are taking advantage of the holy month to make bricks profit. As temperatures rise, so does the demand for the ice blocks, especially during this month when Muslims rely on them to keep their food and drinks cheap. We are selling ice blocks for between 15 naira to 150 naira each, and patronage has really been encouraging. We usually take advantage of this season every year to sell ice blocks, and it has been worth the while. Whenever it is Ramadan period, we used to get this ice block because you know the weather is very hot. So initially, when we ha when we have our iftar. We normally need this kind of ice block so that we can pull our mind up a very good iftar and also an enjoyable one. Health expert, on the other hand, 
say it is essential to balance the consumption of ice blocks with other nutritious food and beverages when breaking the fast during Ramadan to minimize potential negative impact on health. Hassan Koli, Trust TV News, Gwambi. In business, foreign airlines operating in the country have faulted the announcement by the Central Bank of Nigeria, the CBN, that it has settled all outstanding backlog of the valid foreign exchange claims. The CBN had on Wednesday said it has cleared the balance of $7 million pending valid forex backlog. Also in January this year, the Apex Bank disclosed that it had concluded the payments of all verified claims by foreign airlines with the payments of an additional $64.44 million to concerned airlines. However, the president of the Association of Foreign Airlines and representative in Nigeria, Afan Kingsley Nwokoma on Thursday, stated that about $700 million belonging to foreign airlines was still trapped in the country. He challenged the CBN to show evidence of payments if it truly cleared the backlog of FX belonging to the foreign airlines. Let's join Yusuf Akogu for more business updates. Welcome to Business News. I am Yusuf Akogu. The National Bureau of Statistics, NDS, says the average retail price of a liter of petrol increased from 263 Naira in February 2023 to 679 Naira in February 2024. The Bureau said this in its petrol price watch for February 2024 released in Abuja on Wednesday. According to NBS, the February 2024 price of 679 represents 157.5 percent increase over the price of 263 Naira recorded in February 2023. The report's analysis by zones show that the Northwest zone recorded the highest average retail price in January 2024 at 701 Naira, while the Southwest recorded the lowest price of 657 Naira per liter. Nigeria is set to begin the formal exportation of locally produced commodities to South Africa, Rwanda, Cameroon, and Kenya from April on the platform of the Gidded Trade Initiative of the African Continental Free Trade Area. Announcement from the National Center of AFCFTA say although some businesses in Nigeria currently export products to these countries, such exports are informal. Executive Secretary National Action Committee on AFCFTA, Olushego Awolewo, say although trading under AFCFTA is yet to start, the Secretariat of the program has introduced the GTI. AFCFTA is a free trade agreement established among 54 of the 55 African Union nations. The Swiss National Bank has cut its interest rates, becoming the first to do so among the major central banks. The SNB eased its monetary policy and cut its rate by 0.25 percentage points to 1.5 percent, effective from Friday. This is the first interest rate cut since it began to hike them in June 2022. According to the bank, the move is aimed at battling the upsurge in inflation rate. Meanwhile, the Bank of England is expected to keep its main interest rate at a 16-year high of 5.25% on Thursday, rejecting a cut as inflation remained well above target despite recent slowing. Now to the stock market. NGS recovered from three days of negative trading to close in green following renewed interest in equities by foreign investors who are gradually returning back to the trading floor. Let's see how it went down today. Julie leading the gainer stable there to gain 10% to close at 7 naira and 15 kobo per share, followed by Transcorp Nigerian PLC 9.96% to close at 14 naira and 90 kobo per share. Of course, International Energy Insurance gaining 9.66% to close at 1 naira and 59 kobo. Of course, it indeed has moved the market up by 0.13%. 32, uh, 8.192 million volume of shares this exchange has today among investors value at 8.94 billion naira in a list of 8,688 did uh, happen today of course on the floor look at some of the equities leading the activities table we have a UBA United Bank for Africa doing 61 uh, 0.313 million shares assets corporation 31.500 million shares and of course zenith bank also doing 21.324 million shares of course almost a banking sector affair today you will say on the floor of course there are some equities that didn't uh, gain today most of them ended on the losing side of the market leading that table is livestock feeds uh, down 10 percent 
to close at one era and 62 copper per share. Deep cap down 10 percent as well to close at 63 copper per share. Tourist are down 9.86 percent to naira 50 six copper per shares it ended today these are the highlights of the stock trading as it went down this thursday on the floor of the nigerian stock market let's see global stock market for today <music> Now to the FX market. Naira sustained gains on Thursday. The local currency rises by 4.55% after CBN announced that it has cleared forest backlog. Let's see today's market data. <music> Prices broadly steady on Thursday, shored up by a surprise U.S. crude stock drop and the U.S. Federal Reserve sticking to its outlook on rate cut for the year. And the London market, European Brent sells for $85 per barrel. For the paper basket, price steadies at $86 for a barrel. And that's business. I am Yusuf Akogu. <music> Thank you, Yusuf Akogu, for the business update. Now, from the international scene, the Speaker of Ghana's Parliament has halted the approval of new ministers deepening the standoff over the delayed signing of an anti-LGBTQ plus bill by President Nana Akufo-Addo. The bill, which seeks to criminalize gay relationships and support for them, was passed last month but has failed to face the legal challenges. The presidency has requested that Parliament refrain from from sending the bill for the presidential assent until these challenges are resolved. Speaker Alban Bagbin has criticized the presidency's stance as contemptuous, asserting that it undermines the parliamentary authority. The president Akufo Addo is facing pressure both domestically, where many Ghanaians support the bill, and internationally with Western donors and human rights groups urging him not to sign it into law. The delay in the bill's signing has sparked a political showdown with a lawyer challenging its passage in the Supreme Court on the grounds of insufficient parliamentary quorum during the vote. Let's join Adeni Adjishefe for sports news updates. President of the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, Tonobago Kowa, is confident Team Nigeria will surpass its target at the 13th African Games in Accra, Ghana. Okowa said this after Nigeria blew away the fairly strong field on day three of athletic event at the University of Ghana, Legion, winning four golds and a silver medal. The four gold medals came from men and women's 4 by 100 meter relays. The women's 100 meter hurdles courtesy of Toby Amusson and the men's 400 meter by Chidi Okeze, while Esther Joseph got silver in women's 400 meter. Okowa said it is imperative that the Federation works hand in hand with the federal government in order to get the best out of the talented, committed and determined athletes. After three days of action on the track, Team Nigeria have won seven gold, two silver and two bronze medals. The Athletic Federation of Nigeria is working towards the African Championship and the Olympic Games in Paris. The winners of Nigeria vs South Africa tie will face a stiff test on the women's football event of Paris 2024 Olympic Games. The draw ceremony held at the Paul's building in the French capital of Paris revealed that nine-time African champions could face either world champion Spain. 
Japan, Olympic runners up in 2012, and Brazil silver medalists in 2004 and 2008. Nigerian women must first win a tricky double header with current African champion South Africa for them to seal a place in Group C ahead of football event of Paris 2024 Olympics. The other two African teams, Morocco and Zambia, could face USA. Germany or Australia in Group B. Nigerian's first leg clash with South Africa will take place on April 4th at Moshuda Biola National Stadium, Abuja, while the second leg, built for Lofsos Vasfield Stadium in Pretoria, will be played on the 9th of April 2024. That's Sport News. I'm Adini Ajishafe. And with that, we have come to the end of Trust News Hour. Ah, do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms and join our YouTube for news programs and documentaries. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thanks for watching.